All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. And we're looking at Photo Mechanic right now. This is the browser that I use. And today we're gonna to be talking about a process called focus stacking. One of the issues that you run into when you are doing macro photography is that you have an extremely shallow depth of field. So you can see right here, like this front of this eye is in focus, but the back of the eye isn't in focus. And the reason for that is Depth of field is controlled by three factors. One, aperture that most people should know. Two, focal length. Three, distance to subject. Now, because our distance to our subject is so extremely close, even if you shoot at a larger aperture, and in this case, you can see over here, I was at F10, not super high, but, but high enough. You would assume that F10 should give us a larger depth of field, but because we are so close, it's the distance to the subject that's actually overriding anything. A lot of times you can shoot at F2, but be so close to an image that only a pinpoint area is actually in focus when doing macro photography. But there's a process inside of Photoshop that's going to let you extend that depth of field. And that process is called focus stacking. And what it does is you take a series of images and each image you focus on a little bit different area of the image. And then Photoshop is able to combine the areas that are in focus seamlessly and give you a little bit more depth of field. So let's go ahead and take a look at the three images that we're gonna use and they're down here in red. I'm gonna open these up. So in this first image, you can see right here on this little B, we are totally tack sharp. Now I had a little string in here. And the reason I didn't move the string, I did see it, is because it was very hard to set this thing up without it falling over. So I figured it was just easier to leave it there without me knocking it over. I also have this big black area. This is me being stupid. So just proof that everybody still makes mistakes. Um, I was using strobes to photograph this and I had my camera, as you can see, set at 250th of a second, but this camera only syncs at 200th of a second. So this is what it looks like if you're out of sync with your flash. We are losing this little bit of an area. Not a big deal, I was able to clone that out. It really didn't affect anything. Obviously, if it was going over more of the area, it would have been a bigger deal. I actually thought the light was just getting blocked, the strobe, because everything was so tight and cramped, but not a big deal. Obviously the focus of this video is not me being stupid, but it's how to do focus stacking. So let's go ahead and click on the next image and you're gonna see the images move a little bit. Even though I was using a tripod, you know, I'm refocusing the image, so that's gonna cause it to move. And as you touch it to refocus it, sometimes just that little tweak of the camera causes the frame to move a little bit. So we're gonna click down here and you can see that was just a focus move. So we focused a little bit. Now it's a little bit sharper here and here. And then the last image, you can see this little area is here is sharper. Look, I'm not trying to get this whole thing in focus. I'm just trying to extend the focus of the area that I want. So what we are going to do is go out of this and I'm gonna select that first image. I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna select the three images together. This program uses Command E to launch into Photoshop. Now, because these are raw files and you can see I've already adjusted them a little bit, they're gonna go into Adobe Camera Raw first. Now, when you're doing this, this is important. We want all of these images to be toned exactly the same. We don't wanna to tone this one differently than this one than this one. So we're gonna once again hold Shift and select all three of these images. That way, when you come over here and you make any adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw, it's being applied to all three of these photos. Now you can make selective adjustments, but if you make a selective adjustment, remember selective adjustments only apply to the image that you're selected on. So if you do make a selective adjustment, you're gonna to need to apply it to all three images. In this case, I didn't do it. The goal of this video isn't to show you how to tone an image, it's to show you how to do focus stacking. Once you've got everything looking how you want, you're gonna come down here to open. And this is gonna open all three images into Photoshop into different tabs. I'm gonna show you a little trick to get them all together. It just makes the process easier. So I've got image one, image two, image three. So we're gonna go up here to file, scripts, load files into a stack. 
And what this is going to do is just Photoshop is just automatically going to kind of copy and paste and load these files together. So I'm going to hit add open files. Now you could do browse so I could open these up from raw images or just my files if I wanted to, but I've already got these open. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. It recognizes what's open. Just be careful that you don't have other images open because it will open those as well. Then I'm going to put attempt to automatically align source images. So there was a little bit of movement here and we do want to align these images. That's going to be important in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So you can see it's doing its magic. And right now, now I've got image one, image two and image three. And once again, for the third time, we are going to shift click. So hold down shift click to select all three of your images. This is a really easy process. This isn't something that you need to know how to do. Actually, if you tried to mask these out and get only the sharper is, it would be extremely difficult, but we're going to let Photoshop do it. So we're going to go up here to edit and we're going to use auto blend layers. And under auto blend layers, you have two methods. One is for panoramics and in this case, stacked images. So stacked images is what we're doing. That process once again, focus stacking. I've got seamless tones and colors, content aware fill. So you can see some of these images don't totally line up because they've been shifted a little bit. So it will automatically fill in those areas for me. All I gotta do is hit okay. And Photoshop is gonna run through its process and automatically make masks on those images and then create a composite or merged image on the top. Now to click on a mask and show a mask, it's, it's option on a Mac and alt on a PC would be my guess. When you do that, it shows the mask. Now remember, white area is the area of the image that's being used and black is hidden. So in this case, we're picking up most of the background. Click on the next image. These are the areas that it's using. And in this image, once again, this is the area that it's using. And you can see now we have an extended tonal range. We have the eye sharp, but this area over here is sharp as well. And we've got a little bit more depth over here. And that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this top image off. What Photoshop did here is it combined all three of these images and then it made a composite or a merged of all three of these. So we just have one single image. I could actually turn these off because it's not being used anymore. This is the overlying or the important image at this because it's combining all three of these into one that's called stamped visible. Now, the next thing you would do is simply just go through here and tone your photo like normal. And that is how you focus stack inside of Adobe Photoshop. Well, hopefully everybody found this video helpful. If you have any comments and questions, you can leave those below and then don't forget to subscribe.